Now, I'd love everyone to meet Sophia Rose Bernardi, who is also another YouTuber. Yep. And now, it would have been about two months ago, Sophia sent me the most amazing email. Uh, <laughs> she shared with me her story and what she has overcome and what she has achieved. And I was blown away and just, <laughs> I was so honored that you shared this with me because mm -hmm. it's not easy. What you've gone through is not no. um, straightforward at all. No. <laughs> Um, so I wanted everyone to listen to this because at the moment you've noticed with my videos I'm talking a lot about your mental attitude, um, you know, overcoming challenges and um, looking at things with a healthy perspective. Yeah. And you are a perfect example of this and someone who has come from a, you know, toxic, tough, confronting situation yeah. and and sh you've shined through it. I'm, not, I'm sure they were really horrible moments for you but yeah, yeah. what you've come through is is inspiring yeah um so can you can you explain to everyone what you shared with me yeah That's sure okay. um, so when i was 16 years old so about five years ago i'm 21 now so um one of my parents unfortunately has a pretty severe gambling addiction which um was terrible to find out about and it really really broke my family apart and it ended up with my mum and my siblings and I moving across the world to Denmark to be closer to our other family. Can I just explain? So we are just talking about this. Gambling addictions are one of the most frightening addictions because you it's not um, displayed in someone's behaviour like drugs or alcohol. Like visual, like, yeah. Yeah, it, it, you can, and people can hide it and they're great liars. Yeah. And it's not until it gets to crisis point or breaking point where all the money is gone that it actually it unravels that the person has been has been gambling. Yeah, and it just all comes out at once, really, and it absolutely destroys families. Yeah, and that really did break our family, unfortunately, um, in so many different ways. But yeah, so we mm. moved overseas, and, and did your family lose everything from his gambling? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we moved overseas with a suitcase each, and and had to say goodbye to. Not only like family in Australia, but friends, school, belongings, everything. And you were 16 at the time. Yeah, so um, when you're 16, pretty much your friends and your social life is literally everything to you. Yeah. So to be pulled away from that was terrible. But um, I will say, looking back at it now, it's been the most amazing experience overall Like to have gone through all of this mm -hmm. because um, I've just learnt so much, not only about myself, but about money and family and everything like that so um, it was definitely a very challenging few years but uh, my point is from all of this I had quite a negative um, mindset towards money because it was money that broke my family I mm -hmm. guess and um, I got a lot of money taken away from me as well um, so I just always felt like I could never have enough of it and it was hard to get and it would just disappear easily and quickly so like so a lot of fear and anxiety yeah so much fear like the amount of times I have like cried over like not like feeling like um, I'm different to everyone else like all my friends who have beautiful amazing families and money doesn't even cross their mind for one second like that was really really challenging for me because I would constantly be thinking like why is my life so difficult compared to everyone else like um you know Almost yeah. like a, a, the victim mode yeah yeah, so yeah. like i just i just had a really toxic relationship with money thinking like um yeah mainly just probably just comparing myself to everyone else thinking like they have it so easy like you know they go on families with their no, sorry they go on holidays with mm -hmm. their families and um they have a house and everything's paid for like the everything education and perfect. everything yeah like it looks white, perfect the yeah. white picket fence yeah and then there was me that like um had to become very independent very quickly mm -hmm. and had to make all my decisions on my own like in terms of education and and things like that so you moved to denmark with your brother and sister and your mother and, and yep. you nor your sister nor your brother spoke any Danish really? No, not really. You could count to ten and say hello. That's about, that's about it. So at 16, you're put into a new school. Um, you've got to learn the language, not only learn a language, yeah. but be taught in that new language. Yeah. It was very draining. Very, yeah. very draining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then um, uh, talk me through how your financial situation has changed. Because you talked, you just mentioned to us that you were in this like, angry, frustrated, yeah, yeah. toxic um 
place where you repelled money because it was there's so much fear and aggression. Yeah, yeah. What what happened? What was the shift? What made you learn things? What did you do? And then I'd I can't wait for everyone to hear about what you've achieved. Yeah. Um, I will say I feel like from a a youngest age I have been like okay at saving. Like my grandparents always taught me as a child, you know, save half and spend the other half. So. I was always like okay at it and I, I babysat from a young age and everything like that so work's always been like a part of my life but it wasn't until all of this happened that my whole mindset changed like when like all your savings as a kid which is, is hard to do like when you save all that money and it gets taken away from you that's like heartbreaking or at least yeah. it was in my experience oh my gosh, because absolutely. yeah like yeah, I would say no to like social events as a 16 year old so I could babysit my little cousins to earn money mm. and stuff like that you made sacrifices yeah, yeah yeah and then for it to all be ripped away I just it was difficult um so I developed a pretty um bad mindset towards it just thinking my life was very unfair and stuff but I think it Honestly, YouTube really, really did help me and this is where your channel really helped me because I slowly started watching other YouTubers talking about um, saving money and everything and it's obviously like a passion and interest of mine. Um, but it wasn't until I saw your channel that things kind of slowly changed for me because you talk just as much about the money mindset as you do about the whole money side yeah, of things. The, the practical like, steps. Yeah, like uh, most channels just talk about like this is how you save money, like this is what to do, invest here, do this, but like you talk just as much about the mindset, which for me was the entire problem. Yeah. So once I fixed that, and I guess what I learned was just like, you know, if I want to do well in life and I want to save money and be happy, like I have to put in the work for that and I can't just blame the situations I've been put in because then I will, I will never get anywhere. If I just sit here and say like, oh, like this is this person's fault for getting me here, so I'm just going to stay here. Like I will never move on. Yeah. So. so you flicked the switch from being a victim and becoming a survivor. And yeah. you, made, you took responsibility and you yeah. made yourself accountable. Yeah, like so even and though... you empowered yourself. Yeah, so like even though I could easily play the blame game, which I did for a very long time, I sort of, that does not help me, I realise. Like, that, that gets me nowhere. Mm. So I started to, like, put it all on me and be, and change this from, like, a terrible um, situation to, like, a great life experience. Yeah. And so even though I can still easily think today, like, oh, my friends have it so much easier, blah, 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 I still, like, look at it totally different. Now I see it as, like, I'm 21 years old and I look after myself, like, completely independently and, like, financially. Um, I do everything on my own and I still get to live an amazing life yeah. and I'm still luckier than majority of the world. Exactly. And I think that's, like, yeah, I cannot complain when yeah. I know that. Yeah, you know? Your, your attitude and approach is, is, is perfect. And the thing is, and this is where... Um, you are very lucky because you get to feel proud. Yeah, I feel you really proud. Everything you've done, you've done off the back of your yeah. own hard work. And yeah. it's not like someone's giving you money or like giving you a free ride. You've yeah. worked really hard to get what you've to do what you've achieved. Yeah. And you get to enjoy that and, and feel and it all contributes towards your self worth. Yeah. And the importance of having a, a healthy money mindset is it's like planting a oak tree seed. You need to plant it in really fertile soil where you're going to make sure that it gets the right amount of sunlight, the right yeah, amount of water, so you're going to pre protect it from like the pests yeah. and allow it to grow into an amazingly strong um, oak tree that lasts hundreds and hundreds of years and provides great um, shade and um, puts oxygen in, in the air yeah. and that's the way you need to think about this, do looking at your money without a healthy money mindset it's going to be a lot harder and when you have a healthy mindset it's actually fun working on yeah, your yeah it's, it's really fun like yeah. even though i have a lot more expenses than like my friends and everything yeah. like that um i before i would look at how much money was going out and yeah. i would get upset every single time whereas now i'm just like grateful to see that i actually am I'm still saving and um yeah. i'm you a lot more gratitude. yeah and i'm so much more conscious about it than other people so I think that's also helped me to save more because I have to think outside the box and, and mm -hmm. go that extra mile and now I honestly think um, I probably save a lot more than all of my friends I combined yeah. yeah so okay I'm sure everyone is dying to hear um, <laughs> tell me about your financial successes what you've bought 
what you paid for, how you support yourself and how much have you saved? Yeah, so um, I've been living out of home, like paying rent for about a year now, a um, bit more, more or less, yeah. And um, so I've got that expenses and like my phone bill, um, all my travel and I do try to travel and experience things yeah. a lot. Like mm. I've um, been pretty lucky, like I've just been over in Denmark to see my family again and New Zealand and now I'm in Sydney mm -hmm. so um, yeah I've, I've got all that and I am like a minimalist like you though like mm -hmm. so I don't buy things too much um, I'd much rather put my money towards experiences, um, experiences definitely um, but I've managed to save fifty thousand dollars now. Wow! Um, which it's um, five thousand dollars more than two. I know. Ago. It's so good. <laughs> um, yeah, I've um, I will say though, like I do have great support around me, like my grandparents and everything, like obviously help me where they can, and um, I'm very lucky in that sense. But um, but you've done the hard work because you have you took three jobs. Yeah, yeah. So I have done babysitting and worked in hospitality and retail and. You know, I've sold some of my things and I just do like all those little tiny things mm. to just, yeah, try and save some money. And so the money you've saved up is, is your money that you've earned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and did you find that, um, you know, living out of, moving out of home, how did you do that transition? Because a lot of people struggle when they first move out of home because they, you know, have to pay for food and electricity. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so... Well, when I moved to back to Australia a year and a half ago, I did live with my grandparents for a little bit, but mm. I, I was paying them rent um, from the get-go pretty much. Obviously not as much as moving out, but still... So you paid a form of board? Yeah, like $100 a week. Mm -hmm. So I straight away um, got used to that th this is what I have to do. Mm. I think it would have been harder if I could just live there for free and then jump to that. That mm. would have been extreme. But I budget quite a lot. Like I, I track all of my expenses yeah. like every single cent I spend I track that and everything I earn and then um, so I'm very aware and then I set like lots of little goals so um, I'll look at at the end of every month how much I've spent and then I will try um, it's not always the case but I will try and spend less the next month or um, even if it's just in certain areas like if I notice I spent a lot on coffee in January mm -hmm. then I'll try like um, take up a bit of that yeah. the next month and so stuff you're like very that. mindful with yeah, yeah yeah and it's like you said it's it's a fun game almost yeah um, <laughs> it's exciting to like try and improve yeah and you've also paid for things like you bought yourself a car yeah so I did get help with that but yeah I bought myself a car um, and you've also done lots of holidays like you've traveled and yeah lots of different experiences yeah as well. so it's not like you've lived like a hermit you've actually lived life to yeah I think like um, there was a stage where I, I wouldn't do anything because I just saw that as losing money mm -hmm. but since changing my mindset now um, I just feel like because I work hard I deserve to treat myself on um, holidays and stuff like that and it's not all the time it yeah, it's has been balance. like recently but it's yeah balance yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. I'm all about balance and uh yeah okay so. all right look Sophia what you've gone through you know it's with your family being split up losing everything financially mm. learning a new language relocating to another country um learning to reset your money mindset to a much healthier place stepping out from the place of being a victim to the space of being a survivor and someone who now actually inspires people and finds this to be incredibly an eye-opening experience and almost a sign or a message to people anyone at the home that's feeling sorry for themselves or is going through a tough time themselves to see the power of adjusting your mindset and what yeah. you can achieve yeah. and one last question to wrap up the video um, what would you what is one of your biggest financial goals um, I would like to save for a house deposit because I think with all of this, um, you know, losing a home or not even having one and everything like that has just made me extremely determined to have a secure, stable lifestyle and to own my own home would be like amazing. So that's what I'm saving for. Well, I think the fact you've saved up $50,000 at this young age is mm. incredible and I have... Um, no doubt in, in your successes of getting your first home. <laughs> so you, I, yeah. we, I would love it if you could share with everyone when you when this happens. I, I will, believe it will happen yeah. for you. Yeah. All right, Sophia, thank you so much for coming. Um, everyone, I will link in the video description box below Sophia's own oh, thank YouTube you. That's channel. So, nice so you can check, that, check out Sophia's story and everything about her and what she does and what she stands for as, you know, as a fan 
Well, uh, it's a fellow, <laughs> fellow, a fellow minimalist. Those two words got joined together. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do. Yeah. And if you like this style of video and you have a story that you would like to share with us, please let me know um, by sending me an email because this is important that you don't just hear my advice and my words and my stories, but you hear other people. Yeah. Sophia is even more inspiring <laughs> than, what, than what I have to say. So. No. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Bye. Bye.